cool, man. Get on that pot train, bruh. Ah. What's this new format? That's right, it's World News Wednesdays, where we absolutely pretend to be a news show. And uh, today, Florida Man special, so we're just covering Florida Man. Florida couple trapped in an unlocked closet for two days. <laughs> It's like Florida Man, you know exactly what you're gonna get, don't you? And then it just delivers. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding, it just works. Daytona police received a distressing call in late 2014 from a young couple who had somehow managed to get themselves locked in a janitor's closet for two whole days. The two Florida lovebirds, John Arwood and Amber Campbell, had, alleged, had allegedly been minding their own business when they were chased by criminals into Daytona State College's Marine and Environmental Science Center. Why are criminals chasing people into the Marine and Environmental Science Center? That seems like the least likely place for criminals to be. <laughs> Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? If I was like, where am I not going to get robbed? The Science Center. It is Florida, though, after all. They managed to evade their attackers by seeking refuge in the janitor's closet, but this triumph quickly turned sour when they realized they were now locked in. When Daytona police tracked their location and came to the rescue, they found a disheveled John and Ember cowering in the closet, which was covered in their own excrement along with a few scouring pads on the floor. Oh my God, wiping your ass with a scouring pad? Mm. Mm. I mean, to be honest, we just talked about people taking hypodermic needles out of their ass, so uh, it seems less bad, but still. But still. When Daytona police, I read that already. Great job. Their story didn't quite add up, though, for starters. They clearly had access to a mobile phone, so why did they leave it ho two whole days before calling for help? Those scouring pads might provide a clue, as they're often used as a makeshift component of a DIY crack pipe. Oh no! This is why it makes no sense, because you went into the closet to smoke crack. Exactly. Also, how the f do you make a crack pipe out of a scouring pad? I've never smoked crack. Um, surprising. I know. And, uh... But I've seen it smoked in TV. I've seen... Oh, no, they smoke meth in Breaking Bad, don't they? Obviously, that's what the whole show's about. But I'm imagining smoking crack's a bit similar, so why are you using a scouring pad? Although I once made a bong out of a pipe... Uh, out of a plastic bottle and some scuba equipment. So, uh, I guess needs must. And modern problems require modern solutions. In fact, John and Amber had a quite a bit of a criminal history. John had served five jail sentences in Florida for offenses including armed burglary, marijuana possession, and running away from the police. <laughs> I feel like one of those crimes is a lot more serious than the others, the armed burglary. Meanwhile, Amber had previously faced charges for stealing and crashing a brother's car, escaping from a mental health treatment facility, escaping from the back of a police vehicle after getting arrested. Holy shit, that's kind of impressive. Great job. And then punching a deputy sherry, sheriff in the face. You know who you're messing with? Come on. Yo, holy shit, he dead! Oh, he dead for sure! I feel like these are like angry dude crimes rather than like women crimes. I feel like women crimes, not to be sexist, but it's like usually poisoning a husband, not punching a cop in the face and escaping from the back of the car. Damn. Kind of impressed. It's not clear why they had broken into the Marine and Environmental Science Center. Maybe they were hoping to steal a dolphin or at least a sea turtle. It's more likely they just fancied finding a quiet spot in which to smoke a little bit of that crack -a lack And no, it doesn't say crack -a lack here. I made that up on the fly. Impressive, aren't I? And after they realized that they had accidentally locked themselves in, they were very happy to take it in turns to sh in the corner for two days until the crack finally ran out. And they decided to dial 911 for help. <laughs> it's like we're in the corner. Should we call the police, mate? It's like, no, 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 we got some crack left. It'll be fine. It stinks of excrement. And we haven't been wiping our butts with scouring pads because we need them for the crack. Alack. They must have been proper wasted. It turns out neither of them had actually bothered to check if the closet door was locked in the first place. When the police arrived on the scene, they discovered that John and Ember could have walked out at any time. <laughs> Both John and Amber were charged with trespassing, and Amber faced additional charges for violation of her probation. It's very likely that they both served further time in prison, but considering that they'd both just spent two whole days in a confi confined in a tiny communal toilet, I thought they were in a closet. John and Amber probably considered jail to be a five-star upgrade, and the rest of us can sleep easy in our beds at night, as I don't imagine that a cunning jailbreak attempt is ever going to be on the cards. No, definitely not. <laughs> 
Maybe they're like, well, they'll just be trying the jail door just to see if it's open. It's like, yo, John, it's not like that time you're in that crack closet. And now, on that note, a commercial break. <laughs> Asking my audience for money feels weird. How do I get past this? This is a great question as it can definitely feel awkward. But remember, viewers are buying things from you like Super Chat to highlight their message to you. Hey, don't forget, I got a new PayPal link down in the description and you can hit me up with a Super Chat if you want. Ah, welcome back from that jarring commercial break. I hope you loved it. I have no idea who the sponsor was, but I'm sure they're fantastic. Make sure you purchase that stuff or use that service or... I don't know. I don't know what the sponsor was. Let's move on. Florida man gives cops dash cam video that shows he didn't cause car wreck, but did burglarize a store. Uh oh. Finally, here's a classic example of someone breaking the cardinal rule of criminality. When providing evidence which clearly absolves you from any blame of an alleged crime, try to make sure that it doesn't prove that you're also guilty of a far more serious offense. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that guy absolutely rear ended me. Don't watch the end of the video when I get to the store and rob it and murder. All right? You don't need to watch the end. Okay. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward! When police were called to a crash zone in Royal Palm Beach in 2018, they came across the wreckage of a single vehicle operated by Xavier Innocenzio Moran, who was looking more than a little dazed and confused. Covered in cuts and scratches, Xavier claimed that some other wanker driver had cut him off, causing him to have a crash. The police were not entirely convinced, and they took Xavier down to Palm Beach County Jail for questioning. But quick-thinking Xavier suddenly realized that he could prove that the car crash wasn't remotely his fault. The dash cam footage would corroborate his story on how cut up he was by the other driver. He was released after agreeing to hand over the footage, which was later studied at length by the deputy sheriff, who concurred that the footage did indeed prove Xavier's innocence. Maybe the deputy sheriff was having a quiet day, and this was why he decided to study several hours of the footage instead of just the brief section that led to the crash. Or maybe he was hoping to catch sight of a comedy tornado in the distance. That's a callback, folks. But whatever the reason, the deputy sheriff was surprised to uncover something else entirely when he caught a glimpse of what Xavier had been up to just an hour before the crash. The dash cam footage clearly showed Xavier pull her up to a beauty store called Sally Sally's Beauty Supply, which curiously enough had reported a break-in on that very same day. And sure enough, we see Xavier pulling out a baseball bat from the trunk of his car and smashing the glass entrance of the beauty store to bits. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid guys. Why not just use the door? <laughs> he apparently then tried to gain access to the store's safe, but didn't get very far with a baseball bat. Yeah, I've got a safe in this office. I didn't put it in. It's like the company that was here before I guessed in and kept money in it. I have... I don't think there's anything in there. But there's no f***ing way you're getting into that safe with a baseball bat. The door is like this thick. It didn't help matters that Xavier had been keeping himself busy during the couple of days since he, had since he was released after the car wreck. He got into a pretty heated argument with his dad and brother, during which Xavier had whipped out an assault rifle and threatened to kill them both. Xavier, what are you up to? That is not normal behavior. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. After the police were called, Xavier was arrested and handcuffed, but still managed to escape by jumping over a fence before he was later found lurking in the neighbor's bushes. I know this guy doesn't sound particularly bright, but jumping over a fence while handcuffed is still a pretty impressive demonstration of a Florida man superpower. It depends how big the fence is, though, doesn't it, Danny? Like, if it's like one of those white picket fences that I assume all Americans have, it's just like, woo, and you do it really easily. If it's a proper fence, though, I mean, I don't think you could jump over a proper fence, could you? Xavier pled guilty to charges of criminal mischief for the beauty salon caper, along with charges of resisting a, uh, of resisting an officer without violence and improper exhibition of a deadly weapon. <laughs> improper exhibition. You whipped out an assault rifle. He was sentenced to 24 months of probation, ordered to undertake a 12-week anger management course, and paid restitution of $907 to Sally's beauty salon. It sounds as if he may have fared slightly better after the car crash if he'd kept, kept, kept tight lip about the dash cam and just pretended he had to swerve to avoid an oncoming army of turtles. Yes! Thank you so much, Danny. This has been an experimental episode of World News Wednesday. Sans lengthy introduction with weird commercial break and uh, with a tie. Hell yes! Uh, if you like it, smash the like button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Good night. <laughs> I like a newscaster.
Look at this rabbit from my hat. And by rabbit, I mean syringes. And by hat, I mean f***ing ass.